Dreams and healing. That's our topic for this episode of the Ekinkar Soul Adventure Podcast. I'm your host, Doug Kunin. So what's happening when we dream? Some say it's the psyche blowing off steam and resolving daily stresses. That's good as far as it goes. And yet for some people, many people, there's a deeper role and purpose to dreams, to access inner wisdom. And there's so much to learn from dreams in every aspect of our life. So today you're going to hear an authentic experience in which dreams played a key role in healing. Our guest is Arlene Forbes, a student of Ekinkar, mother, wife, grandmother, and a retired registered nurse for over 30 years. Welcome, Arlene. Thank you, Doug. It's wonderful to be here and to explore this topic of dreams. It's one of the key reasons why I love to go to bed and sleep. (laughs) (laughs) It's that I get to dream and continue exploring my spiritual life. Yeah, it adds just another dimension to living. Absolutely. Also, I know that I can't grow spiritually if I don't have certain experiences to learn the lessons that I need to be a more loving human being, but also a more spiritual being. Well, that's a key, valuable spiritual principle. In Ekinkar, it's known as the golden contract between soul and God and the life we live. And it says that every encounter, without exception, is there to move soul along spiritually on its way back home to God. That's every encounter, every event, without exception. So it's so all-encompassing. And Arlene, you have a story of how this played out in your life and through your dreams. Could you share that with us? One of the significant encounters that we have is with our family. And a few years ago, my daughter, Regina, called me, and she was upset. She had this upsetting dream about me um, having cancer, and she had this extreme fear of me dying from cancer. And I listened, and I just keyed into some of the spiritual aspects of the teachings where prophetic dreams come into play. And I told her that the dream that she had may not necessarily come true. First of all, I acknowledged that I was feeling, you know, fine. And so that calmed her down a bit. But I told her that dreams, prophetic dreams can help to, you know, change the course of our destiny. We don't have to necessarily have these experiences. So when I got off the phone, I recognized that, you know, she, some of the fear that I had about, you know, cancer had surfaced because I had a twin sister named Irene who translated or died uh, from breast cancer. And so the fear the annual mammograms that I have every year brought up this fear. And the dream that Regina had shared with me just really dug in this time. So I... Um, recognize that, yes, because we were twins, that I had the same genetic makeup that she had, and that was more stress-inducing for me. So I, dis- I, um, I sat down and I decided that I would um, work on it this time. <laughs> I would work on this fear. But the thing about it was, is the mammogram was scheduled, my annual mammogram was scheduled a week after I had received this call from Regina. I had the mammogram and I got a notice in the mail that there was something of a suspicious nature in the results. So, uh, (laughs) yeah, and they had recommended that I have a sonogram, but the sonogram would not be scheduled until the following Monday. That's a tense time when you're waiting like that, yeah. And so I had the weekend to sit with, you know, the finding out what the results of this was. 
So I went into contemplation and I did a spiritual exercise with the inner master of the Mahanta. Now the Mahanta is the inner side of Sri Harold Klamp, who is the living act master. And he works with us inwardly as well as outwardly. And he's like a coach, you know, a coach for me. And um, he doesn't tell me what to do, but he provides the necessary tools and guidance that I need to help me on my journey. And he also works as the dream master and works with me in my dreams. So that's a unique part of the teachings that I love so much. So I asked, what am I going to do? What should I do? And all I got was love and trust. Love and trust. I had to surrender and allow the inner master, the Mahanta, to help me to move forward in this experience. Well, Regina's dream and was a wake-up call for me. So over the weekend, I continued to work with the dreams and in contemplation, working on gaining the courage to get over the, my fears. And then one morning, I had this dream with a trusted longtime initiate in Ekinkar. And we were walking along, and she looked at me, and she invited me to breakfast, says, you want to have breakfast? And I said, yes. And she said, do you like eggs? And then she went into this thing about eggs. She says, you can have them scrambled, you can have them poached, you can have them omelets, you can have them fried. And she went on like this. I mean, you, every way you could have eggs imaginable. I'm getting hungry. And yeah, really. <laughs> and but for me, in this, in this, the eggs was significant symbol for me because, for me, eggs symbolized giving birth to something new. I could choose to have those eggs any way I wanted. She said, and I said, "Wow." For me, that symbolized that I could make different choices that I had giving birth to a new reality. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So could I choose fear, anxiety, trust, love and trust? That was what I got from my, my, uh, my contemplation. So I released it, I surrendered it, and I let it go. And I could have my eggs any way I wanted them. Well, the sonogram showed that this suspicious finding was benign. And I recognized that I'd had a healing. It wasn't one of a physical nature. It was one of a spiritual nature. The dream with the act is signaled that I didn't have to hold on to that fear of cancer. I didn't have to have the same destiny as my twin sister, Irene. And so I was able to move forward with that. The inner master, and what's unique to these teachings is he's able to help us with the karma, to relieve the karma in the dream state, so we don't have to necessarily go through any, the physical pain. And for me, it was a fear. So that was lifted. So a lot of people want help in remembering their dreams. They're having them. They know something important happened, and yet you lose them. You lose the, You lose aspects of your reality if they're not journal, if I don't journal them particularly. So journaling is very a key component of capturing our dreams and learning from them. And through dreams, my consciousness expands, our consciousness expands to see the possibilities that we might miss while we are awake. So dreams are a continuum. It's not a separation from our daily life and our waking life and our sleeping life. It's a continuum. What's your approach to remembering your dreams? Well, setting the intention. Setting the intention before bedtime, having my dream journal by the bedside, and setting that intention of remembering my dreams and maintaining the discipline to get up and write them down. <laughs> Absolutely. And... That's what these spiritual exercises are about, is working in partnership with this larger divine principle. 
And just something as simple as recording your dreams can help those memories come through. So your story is a great connecting point with a spiritual exercise that's in one of Harold Klemp's books, Eck Wisdom on Health and Healing. And it's a spiritual exercise to heal yourself using dreams. And it starts at the point you mentioned, Arlene, which is setting the intention at night, at bedtime, to just sing Hugh, which is this ancient mantra, sacred sound that helps soul align with greater love, creativity, wisdom, and awareness. And it's a way of spiritualizing oneself before you go to bed so that your dreams take on a a higher, refined, and meaningful aspect. And so in this exercise, you sing or chant Hugh for five or ten minutes, and then you create a mental picture of the problem, of the health problem. You visualize it. You can even create a cartoon picture or an inner animation. And, and you just form that image. And then pause and create a new image or picture, seeing yourself as healthy or in the way you want to see yourself for a better approach to health, to beingness in the world. And really filling out that image again through a picture or it could be even as if you're running a movie. And then you just let it go, let it go into the hands of divine spirit and go to sleep as usual. And then another key part is to record your dreams. It could be in the middle of the night, could be in the morning, just record the dreams. And you do this exercise every night for about a week being alert for clues during the day because sometimes the Holy Spirit works through a waking dream of something that happens in your daily life, something somebody says or does or something that you see. might be finding a new doctor or making a dietary change or a change in attitude. So that's one form of exercise, spiritual exercise, a technique. And of course, the miraculous part is tapping into the higher power, the divine intelligence, or the Eck, as it's known in Eckenkar. We have an audio clip from Harold Klemp where he talks about touching this miraculous, infinite side of life. And so in these times, many people are looking to a variety of sources of healing. The standard traditional doctors are still very much necessary, but people are also finding their way to alternative methods of healing. And why are they doing this? Because the level of consciousness in people is higher. They realize that just because they went to a certain doctor in the past to heal their troubles, the troubles of the present and the future of a sort, that it's going to take a lot of different kinds of doctors to address and to heal them. But remember that the main healing comes not from any outer source. Any true, humble doctor knows that healing does not come through the pills he dispenses or any sort of alternative treatment through an herb or anything else. It comes through the divine power, through the power of God, in some way getting through to one individual to help bring about a healing. And as a member of Ekankar or even as a member of any church, you will realize and learn that the path to God is not one of a group. You are on this path to God yourself. You may be in a member of a group that is very large, very small, or you may go all by yourself. But you are on this journey to God, and the only thing important on this journey is you and God And once you've established the correct relationship between yourself and God, then you're able to go back out into the world and serve all God's creatures. You will serve with love, 
kindness, compassion, and understanding. Because you've walked in those moccasins before, you've been there. You can help others by listening. Because you've been there. And there are others who can help you because they've been where you are now. And all the help that comes to us is from the Holy Spirit, whether it comes in a dream or whether it comes through the help of a friend or the help of a doctor. The trick is the discrimination that you need to tell what's good for you and what's not good for you. And this comes by listening to your heart, in other words, to your own inner master. So I would like to leave you with this thought this evening. Open your heart to love because God loves you. You know, Doug, that last thought Sri Harold left for the listeners really lit up for me. Open your heart to love because God loves you. And you know, that's what my dream did for me. It helped me to open my heart to experience God's love for me. And by following that inner guidance and listening, that no matter the outcome, I could accept whatever came, thus fulfilling that golden contract. I was able to heal the cancer of fear, and I move forward into a new state of consciousness. What a treasure. It's interesting how these trials and tribulations of life are the things that can propel us forward as aids to spiritual living, and we face it with a new level of creativity. And we can tap into new ways to this love. And we have an exercise that really works with that principle. It's from the book, Ek Wisdom on Health and Healing. And it involves using the creative imagination and tapping into the God force through the seeing power of soul to use light for healing. So in this exercise, you go into contemplation in whatever way feels comfortable for you. And you shut your eyes and you visualize the audible life stream. This is the pure white light of God, a composite of all the colors. Now visualize a ray coming off of it. It's very much like a prism to see the spectrum of colors. The ray you see is orange, which applies to physical health. With your eyes closed, visualize this orange stream coming through you. Just let it flow to the area in your body that's diseased, afflicted, or injured. And you can do this for 20 minutes. And he says, this is a healing technique, but you do it only for yourself. Don't go out and blast the orange light at other people. Again, it's the self-responsibility principle. And so that's a technique for physical healing. Again, it can happen that someone has an, a sudden and amazing healing of a condition uh, just as often or perhaps even more often it is leading us to making a change in our life that will bring about the healing. You can also use another color of light, and this is the blue light, which is for the inner bodies, the inner spiritual bodies, the astral, causal, mental, and etheric. And this is to improve and to bring healing to our mind and emotions. You can just close your eyes and visualize the blue light coming into the heart center. And this is known as the blue light of the Mahanta. The Mahanta consciousness is the highest state of consciousness known to humanity. And the blue light is for this calming and healing effect for the emotions and mind. And it's important to realize this isn't something that you're creating out of the ethers from some source alien to yourself, but it comes from our own God worlds, and we're now just becoming aware of it. 
So those are just two techniques. There's many others. And there is just hue, a love song to God. Hue is a healing sound. So if you're in pain, and when you're in pain, chronic pain or whatever it is, sometimes it can be really hard to imagine anything else but that pain. But by singing and feeling this hue, love song to God, it can be light, it can be sound. It's love, it's divine love in action. It can really help. Well, we want to thank everyone for listening in today. Please see our show notes on your podcast platform where you can find extra dream resources for your exploration and study. And don't forget to check out Ekinkar's new Soul Adventure magazine. It's free. It's online. It has a dream technique in it for remembering dreams. And it also has a question and answer section where someone asked Sri Harold, the Living Ek Master, what does it mean when we dream of an old friend? And there's a real interesting answer in there. You can find it at souladventuremagazine.org. That's souladventuremagazine.org. This has been a real soul adventure, Arlene, today. Thank you for telling your story and sharing your insights and experiences. You're welcome, Doug. It's my pleasure. Great. Well, we look forward to being with you all together again soon. Take care.